12 Years a Slave has a stupendous 95% critic score on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow. It made $187 million from a $22 million budget oh, right. that and is has impressive. been allocated the accolade of universal acclaim by Metacritic. So, we've decided to watch this film and try to bottle why it's considered one of the greats and if that reputation is justified. We've read all the critics' reviews, we'll discuss everything good and bad about this movie and finish by calculating the patented Mate Night score to okay. determine, once and for all, if it deserves the hype. Mmm, let's go. Fred, why don't you get us kicked off? What even is 12 Years a Slave? Revelry in the uncomfortable and upsetting. I couldn't agree more with that. I gotta say, the... I mean, even outside of what I thought of it, what was abundantly clear is how they really marinated in certain scenes which are supposed to be disturbing for, for the audience. They really allowed you to, as much as it's possible to do for an audience member who's not experiencing this, feel what horrors the characters were going through. Uh, and I really respected it for that. Um, it, <laughs> I, I, uh, I'm, I'm going to say this because it was kind of funny. I watched it on a train. Okay. <laughs> the most difficult <laughs> film I've ever seen in transit. That's a bad yeah. film for a train. I don't know why. Was maybe most... that's, a, that's a future May night thing, maybe. Don't moment. watch it on a train. It's a very busy train. And the moments where I literally was just like... <laughs> Turning the, bloody, <laughs> turning the brightness <laughs> down to one. Pretending that I wasn't watching, wasn't just watching 12 oh, years ago. Okay, but uh, so if you could quantify how much you enjoyed this film as a in number. A, in a number. Got reaction. Just enjoyment, not how good it was, but yes. how much you enjoyed it. Not the main ice score. Give me a three. I, I, I've been missing a three, two, one. I'm gonna, okay. Gonna, you hit me with that. This oh, is yeah, not the main ice score. This is no, just no, for me to understand. Personally what I thought. I will give you mine as well. What you enjoyed, how much you enjoyed yeah. this film. So. Hit me. Three, two, one. Eight point two. Seven point two. Ooh, okay. Okay. Enjoy it a bit less. Okay, so please good. continue. A. What? What? Where is this? Eight point two. Qualitatively, a great film. Mm. You re you you really enjoyed it. I was really surprised by how much I enjoyed it. Yeah. Okay. And and to be fair, I I may have fallen into the classic trap, but it's in my enjoyment score, so I don't mind as much of being. Oh, I'm surprised how. Great, I think this film is. Sure. And I, I, I for that reason, was like, it's hitting eight. It's definitely hitting eight for me. Nice. I is, just, there, is there anything that kind of really spearheaded that and caused that to happen, any particular element? Uh, to be honest, I don't think I've really watched many slavery films. Yep. So for me, it's not a tired... I know some people say, like, all right, they're making another slavery film purely for the sake of a bit of... It's a genre which you expect to do well. Yep. So it might be kind of ground that maybe has already tread. Yep. Not bringing anything new to the table. So I know that some people would say that they're not that interested in watching new slavery films. I haven't had that experience. So I was really interested in the real life events of what were happening, the horrors of what happened. I've known and heard about it and yet being able to properly see it you know, all the way through, like it's just a horrific situation for a man who still doesn't lose his hope. One thing that, we spoke about Joker actually recently. One thing I really didn't like that much about Joker, and I don't generally like about films, is just we are going to show you how bad things can get. <laughs> like yes. Just for the sake of then it's going to all implode. That's the idea. I really admire films that have a stoic element. Yeah, okay. Just, just naturally, it's something I enjoy more, I should say. It's not that I admire it. I, I understand where those films are coming from. But for an enjoy, from an enjoyment perspective, I really liked how I was. I had so much admiration for this character. You feel so much respect towards yeah, the character. Who's going through the, yeah. such shit. Yeah. And just at every turn is having people just disrespect and, and undermine him as an intelligent man who was free. Yeah. And just nothing is working out. And then for him to really realise his freedom at the end. Mm -hmm. And like right at the end when he meets his he meets back with his family after 12 years. And we're just like, I'm sorry, I'm a little late. <laughs> I've been through. <laughs> that was probably my like least favourite thing yeah, okay, about the whole I, film. I, I, I was, I was uh, 
into it. I just yeah. was. But go on then. I, well, so I 7. Know, 2. So first of all, completely agree with pretty much everything you said. Yeah, okay. I think that it is by far the most impactful and most immersive and well-made story about slavery that I've ever watched. And I think that that was a hell of an experience and it was brutal. It wanted to be brutal and it was brutal. And I had such a profound respect for the main character that mm. I, that is a really important part of a film for me. So I really liked that. The thing that really, st- I, I went into this thinking, I've always been quite excited to watch this film. It's one that I've never yeah, got around yeah, to watching. I've always thought it looked really cool. And I was like, oh, that that's such, it's such an interesting idea. This person who's been kidnapped and put in slavery, but they are like a proper fucking switched on person. So mm. that you can real get some emotional depth out of that pain yeah. in a way that is just profound and painful to watch. Um, And I felt like the director was so desperate to lay on how brutal it was that it effectively felt like a menagerie of different cinematic brutal moments, which were bookended very poorly by some storytelling. And what I mean by that is it was about the real thing that caused this, I think, was he was in such a rush to, to show me this brutality that it was about 15 minutes in, there was a scene where he kind of just went, oh, by the way, he has a family. Mm. Oh, and by the way, this is kind of how he got into this position. Right, now back to the brutality. And so when he finally gets back to his family at the end, there is no catharsis for me because I'm like, these are strangers to me. Okay, yeah, okay. That's and a he was in so much of a rush to get to the brutality that actually it would have been even more impactful if he'd have just had a bit of patience at the beginning and really got me emotionally invested in the characters in question. Mm. I finished it and I said to her, I was like, tell me three things about the main character. The main character. She's like, well, he can play the fiddle. I was like, okay. He's from New York. Mm-hmm. Okay. And he has a family. I'm like, that's the main character. I'm like, tell me okay. anything about his wife or his kids or any of them. Mm, like, okay. and so whilst the brutality was immersive and incredibly well made and beautifully performed and incredibly powerful, I need a film to have a story, a good story. That is how you communicate a message well, as far as I'm concerned, especially in cinema. Mm. And it just felt like an afterthought to me. I don't agree about the story. So the events that he went on, mm-hmm. I obviously based on real events as well. Yeah. I, 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 his journey as a slave, mm-hmm. I found interesting, and I was really interested to see where it would go and the trials and tribulations of that. Mm-hmm. Where I do completely agree with you, and it's an oversight of mine. I think you make a great point about how they undervalue the time spent they, they they would have had a much more impactful and cathartic reunion if they'd have spent more time with the family mm-hmm. it was a case of we started with a slavery scene that was uncomfortable then we spent a bit of time with his family in a flashback and then it was the process of him yeah. getting sold into slavery uh, and it would have been I, I do agree. I think the story would have been better executed if they'd have spent maybe half an hour, the first yeah. half an hour really going into why he values this position that he's in. And building an emotional connection between the audience and the people who are going, the family that's going to be torn apart. Mm. Um, really important to say, and you, you remind me of the point, I, I think I was trying to make this point, but it's hard to mm-hmm. it's hard to articulate with a subject like this. Just because a film touches on something that is important to have art about Mm -hmm. doesn't mean it automatically is good. Couldn't agree more. And shouldn't mean that people automatically elevate it just because they are potentially scared to say that there are issues with this. Yeah. And that's obviously this is this is a genre of films where that could be a problem. Um and one the the point that you make is a very valid one about the, the story structure. I do still think certainly the events post-slavery are interesting and, and the, the story develops well. Mm-hmm. There are points which I thought weren't as good, like the Brad Pitt, white saviour I thought you coming yeah. in. <laughs> I just, I've seen that he scene He should before. have come in half an hour before the end, yeah, rather, so, than, rather uh, than five minutes also, before the uh, end. I mean, this is kind of a bit of a joke, but like the fact that the executive produced it and then basically 
was like, I'm going to be the guy who comes in and is like... It's mental, isn't it? a really it's, wise it's man. so mental. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Like, that guy, I read a tiny bit about Northrop and, and the, the Canadian who helped yeah. helped to get him his freedom. Yeah. And it was a long process of, of a lot of, not espionage, but they had to really smoke and mirrors, be very careful about it. For sure. They, they worked out the plan, and then he had, like, loads of different provisors of how he was going to do it he sent letters they decided they were never going to speak to each other again over the course of a few months this all played out where they expected to hear back in three months it took five his plan was to end up to go directly to the the contacts that he had like he'd have traveled all the way up to say like face to face you need to come down so this was like could have been again like a 30 40 minute section which would have also made Brad Pitt's character seem less like a white saviour. Yeah. I don't like that idea as just, oh, we're just going to paint people with that brush just because there, mm-hmm. there is a white person in it. In this case, there genuinely was a historical figure who really helped. And he, they made it seem like he was literally like just coming in to save the day. We they need to conclude this movie. Made, we're running out of budget. Let's have, just end it now. He could have given it more power there yes. as well. So, yeah. And one thing I do want to say... The uncomfortableness, yeah, he obviously was thriving in in making those moments happen and really savouring the, the point to yeah. make them as they were. And I think that that is necessary in a movie of this type. You, you have to be um, cognizant of what happened yeah. and be clearly... Mm-hmm. You, you have to have some sort of artistic expression of, of these events. So... I don't mind that that's how it was done. And they were well executed. For sure. I think you are right, though. It probably diminished from the overall story because it feels like that yeah. was that has to be the focal point. And you also make, you make a good point about the, the, the middle. You know, my complaints are very much about beginning mm-hmm. and end being such an afterthought. Mm. And, and so the middle... I saw referred to it as a as a, almost a, an, an anthology, a completely unrelated. Mm-hmm. And I don't. I think you are right. That's a bit harsh, and probably a better way of framing it is: you've got your beginning and end, which really should have been much more flesh, fleshed out. The middle, it felt like less of a story for me because really at its core, this movie was about survival. It Mm. wasn't him trying to escape and it wasn't him trying to achieve anything. I'm so used to, and I really like a story where effectively the conflict is we want something, we're trying to do something. And whilst it didn't have the beginning and end, the middle, they aren't unrelated. There was a journey there, Mm. but I just felt like it wasn't trying to go anywhere. But actually, if the point in the movie is, I want to immerse you in this part of history, which it did exceptionally mm, well, yeah. part of that experience is survival. Like, it's not going to have this beautiful fairy tale, oh, we're going to try and achieve this thing, and this is going to be a 90-minute beginning, middle, and end mm. No, it's about, like, surviving brutality. It's about, like, just making it. I think that maybe there could have been a couple of little devices to just kind of direct me a little bit more through that middle. Um, So it meant that really for me, it came down to this is a very good film that I could have enjoyed a bit more if Mm. they'd have have framed it better for me. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because the one thing I did take away from it is I really enjoyed watching it. I had points obviously i was traveling and i I had to stop it at certain points and uh, watch it a bit later and i remember being like i I really can't wait to finish the end of this so there was definitely a a high level enjoyment for me so it did have something uh your arguments about the bookend i I didn't enjoy the brad pitt bit but i hadn't thought (laughs) as much about the start which i think is very justified what i'm interested to ask is is this the only film certainly that we've done that maybe warranted a longer runtime? That's a really good question. We're talking about 12 years. Yeah. How long is it at the minute? Two hours 20? Yeah, it's right? like... So it's already I, quite I, long. Going into it, I was... I thought it was th- over three hours. I presu- mm. I just presumed it was. It yeah. seemed like the sort of film it's that would... It's 12 years. <laughs> yeah, it's 12 years in... Uh, you know, films of that nature tend to... Yeah, Be 100%. kind of longer histor- historical films. I, I think that... Here you go. 
I think that you could make it longer and it'd be better. But I also think that you could make it better without making it mm. longer. I think that you've got options there. It doesn't need to be longer. I think that you could take some of the stuff out if you needed to. To tell a to tell an impactful story, you could keep it two hours twenty and just adjust the balance. Mm. But equally, that middle is so important, especially because it is biographical, that in some ways it would feel wrong to take anything out of that any more out of that is mm. no doubt they've taken tons out i mean you referred to the canadian who helped him there's a whole thing yeah. there that they've had to take out you probably wouldn't want them to take too much more out because that really is the soul of the movie is this human being who they you want, clearly respect watching him survive these horrible they want to spend as much time as possible on his trials which is fair enough yeah but probably um, would have made a richer film if they'd have let's say they had to keep it in 2 hours 20 maybe shorten that a bit I don't know, it's tough. That's why I think you might have just needed to extend it. Well, Brad, the Brad Pitt thing, I think, could have been involved in the stuff that was already happening yeah. in, the, in the like in the half an hour leading up to the end. Mm -hmm. um, and it would have been quite interesting to have a scenario in which maybe our main character obviously doesn't have a much trust for white people. Mm. And there's this relationship that builds between them where he starts to learn that this person can potentially be trusted. That would have been a really enjoyable part of the movie that could have happened within the sequences that were already there. Mm. Just bring him in a bit sooner, maybe start him dotting around in the background, see him talking to Michael Fassbender's character oh no it's another evil white guy mm. and then slowly we start to build a bit of a relationship yeah. there i think that would have felt much more odd. yeah okay i agree and i still think though you could have like i i felt like the slavery section that that whole kind of middle Two three hours. quarters of the film yeah i didn't at any point feel like this was rush uh, sorry that this was dragging yeah, yeah, I think you're, yeah. So I, I would fair. be perfectly happy to keep that as is. You still get the uncomfortableness and, mm -hmm. and you get to give, you know, time to the horrors that you're seeing. But you could just add an extra 20 minutes to the start. Like, it doesn't need to be long. The start needed it more than the end for me. Yeah, okay. And, and change the end so that Brad Pitt's character is integrated a bit sooner. Yeah. You know, one thing that we, I want to just mention before we move on to anything else, a cool as hell scene, is when Chua tells EGF4's character, um, Solomon, has to um, convince Thingy that, you remember he, he tries to give the papers to, to the other white yes. worker that comes yep. on who's a drunk. That was so cool. I know where you're going. And he Sorry, turns, he, he basically gets called out. Fassbender's character Fassbender comes, comes out. in He's and be like, oh on. yeah. I know exactly what you've done. You can read and write. You're you were gonna try and send a letter yeah. out of here, were you? And for him to just turn it on and be like, "Well, obviously I can't." Yeah, like that whole sequence. I think that might be my favorite scene in the full thing. Like him just showcasing his greater intelligence yeah. than both of them to dupe them. It, it just like completely say, "Why, and why is he in And keep his here? cool in like what yeah, would have been a doing such situation a cool way. that you would be like gasping for air trying to talk and just give the whole game away if you were a lesser man mm. i think really at the core of what makes us an enjoyable movie is the performance and the character that led the whole thing i yeah. think that it was you just felt a profound amount of respect for him and it did make the brutality feel more painful because there it was this individual that you admired mm. going through this and seeing this like completely undignified way of treating him just made it feel so much more powerful i think yeah uh what did you think of michael fassbender in it very racist wasn't he yeah that was more the character <laughs> <laughs> just, just saying, <laughs> didn't write that bit himself <laughs> um no we want you to be brad pitt's character no <laughs> look that's the one thing like generally the arc you know the stereotypical white slave owner character felt a bit simple is yeah they're just a too evil yeah he is what he is he's supposed to be the 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 worst of the worst there are a few scenes where he really got to like show his range and go for things and he, it it didn't even really work for me that well sure okay um yeah i i thought that generally when i watch things of this nature i'm never watching it for the people on that side 
Yeah, that's fair. But he did have a lot of lines, which is why I he thought did. I would I, ask you. Well, maybe I'm just saying I don't think he did amazingly. Yeah. I think he middle was of the road, pretty middle not of too the bad. Road. Um, the Benedict Cumberbatch character and performance. I, You know what? I actually found his character so interesting because... That's almost an example of like not the worst they of of those sorry not the worst of the people that you'd find in that period, but in a way they are worse because they know they really do know. I that love what that moral doing complexity. Yeah, and and maybe the saddest part of the whole thing is when he thinks that he's doing right by saving his life, when he knows that he's a free. He, he knows there's something more going on here, yep. and he's trying to tell him and and try and put his trust in any like. No, he Who says, what about my debt? That's what he says. He, yeah. he basically says, like, I can't because of money. And I, I, I couldn't agree more. I think character-wise, that was very interesting. It, I think one of the things that it made me feel that I wasn't expecting was, uh, in addition to the moral complexity of, this guy feels a bit like a good guy, but he obviously fucking isn't because of what he's doing, yeah. was this kind of weird feeling of Stockholm Syndrome. Where you yeah. like almost love him a little bit, even though you're like, this is a scumbag. And you see that, I mean, in the the other um, slave when they originally get taken from their their homes and stolen and put into the slave trade, and then one of them gets picked up by their master. Yes, and he's like, master, oh my god, I can't believe you're here. Tell me, and he's obviously been completely affected by the master slave owner dynamic. Yeah, like he's like, I don't want us to cause, we don't want to cause any ruckus here. We want to stay. We, we want to be smart about we want this. To, yeah, survive. Yeah, exactly. Which has been a theme that just kept coming. Yeah. And yeah, as well, Benedict Cumberbatch, his uh, wife in it has the same sort of, like, she's, she feels Why like she's right. Why don't you have right. a cup of tea? Why don't you go get nice. a drink? It's like, yeah, but you still own this. Yeah. Like, you still put it like, you'll, oh, get, facilitating over, you'll get over this. your children. That was Feel it. Us, yeah. yeah. And it was like, there was a sense of empathy on her face that was so strange to watch. Mm. And I really liked that. I uh, think that that moral gray area that the film gave was certainly very interesting. Much more. Those characters are much more interesting than Fassbender's character and his, his wife is just the, the overtly racist characters. Yeah. It's interesting to see those that are more morally gray. Okay. It's time to settle if this film justifies the hype. The score it has on IMDb is 8.1 out of 10. We're going to visit the Mate Night Machine. We'll probably beep boop, probably do some very strange things. In so a caterpillar. Room. A caterpillar. Yep. Maybe. Maybe a butterfly. And what we will come out with is a score, which as everybody knows, is never, ever wrong. Never wrong. It's never been wrong. Never and it will never be. will be. So we'll be right back. Thank you very much. Beep. Oh my God, we're back in the room. Whoa. Oh, Whoa. Whoa. Oh my God. Whoa. Just in case the neighbors are going on? We're going to have to, we're going to have to rattle on through this. We've got a score. We've mm. got a score. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've put it through the main nine machine. Hands up. This is, this is not us. This is just okay. the machine. What was it? 8.1 to beat. Mm-hmm. Does it justify the hype? 7.60 out of 10. Which is pretty middle of the road for the ones we've done, right? Yes, but it's a good score. Yeah, like, it sure. is a good film. I, I think that you hit the nail on the head a bit earlier, which is films score higher when they have a message that, pe- that resonates with people. Mm-hmm. And... I will try my best personally at least to always assess the quality of a film independent of that. Just mm-hmm. how well made is it? This is a very good film yeah. with very good performances with a couple of quite not great plot moments like mm-hmm. with Brad Pitt's character, things like that. 7.6 seems fair. Maybe a little overhyped. Yeah, for sure. You know how I'd say like... I'd probably encapsulate it like this. There were some moments that were made purely for to be disturbing and unsettling. And obviously the actual content of the film itself is, you know, incredibly impactful. 
yet I would not be very surprised if in five or ten years I, I don't really remember much of the content of it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's fair. All right, well, thank you so much for listening, everybody. We really do appreciate it. Uh, this has been our Road to Can series, and yeah. we'll see you on the next one. Woo, choo-choo.